Recently, I hit 500 completed anime on my anime list. A number which many of you are probably thinking, is that it? Of which I say, rude news. But I can understand why, because some people in the community can boast incredibly high numbers of completed anime properties, going into well the thousands, the two thousands. And with it though comes this troubling notion that this number of completed works is somehow representative or an indicator of one's overall general knowledge on anime or general value of opinion on both individual shows and anime as a whole. This exists in all sorts of fandoms, of course, from film bros on Letterboxd to music snobs on, I don't know, people still go on the Mew board on 4chan. But my particular focus today is on the anime community and sites like My Anime List, Annie List, etc. Some go as far to even gatekeep, saying things along the lines of, don't talk to me unless you've seen 500 anime. Said semi-ironically and as a joke, but worryingly only semi. To a degree, I can understand where this idea comes about. The more anime you've seen, the more you get exposed to the ins and outs of the industry, the underlying language of how anime works, and it can paint a broader picture for individual subgenres and movements. Conversely, it's very common to see people who have seen comparatively few anime, maybe only a handful on Netflix, comment and complain on things in a very reductive way, in an almost sort of Dunning-Kruger fashion. But this is not such a clear-cut matter. There are many factors that go into one's overall knowledge of the anime landscape and to that individual number of watched anime itself. Let's go into unnecessary detail about both of those things. I'm sure most of you have had the experience of hearing somebody who doesn't really watch or like anime make a very bad take about it. Maybe they watched some re-uploaded TikTok video of a dramatic middle school fight and described it as very anime. Or maybe they say they don't like anime other than Ghibli for being weird when the only anime they've ever tried to watch is something like fucking Mickey Torsen or some shit. And that attitude can be very frustrating. The getting a lot of boss baby vibes from this meme exists for a reason. But more exposure doesn't always exactly equal better opinions. You don't immediately gain better insight or critical thinking solely from consumption. Let's consider a hypothetical person who has only seen two dozen anime. You might be very quick to dismiss any sort of critical thought or thing they might have to say about anime. But honestly, we just don't know enough about this person solely based on one number. Maybe they're mainly a manga guy. They could have read thousands of them and they just prefer the way that reading manga lets you go at your own pace. Or maybe they're super into JRPGs and visual novels, maybe they've played countless of them, and they tend to just watch the anime adaptations of their favorite games. They could have a huge interest in world animation in general, maybe they're a Japanese cinema buff, they could have studied Japanese at university, hell, perhaps they even lived in Japan for a time. Or maybe they aren't any of these, but those 24 anime they have seen, they absolutely love and they have enough of a background in media theory and critical thinking and enough integrity to try to properly analyze the work while seeking out appropriate citations. Conversely, another hypothetical person has logged over a thousand anime, but they've never read a manga or a visual novel in their life, they don't really care about Japan at large, they have no media theory chops, and they largely put it on in the background while they play games with their friends or do chores. Now, there was nothing wrong with watching anime in that way. I mean, however people want to use their free time, that's whatever, I'm not the friggin' media police or anything like that. But I would definitely trust any structured criticism coming from the first case over the second. One single number does not tell us enough about a person other than how much they've consumed. Or rather, how much they've consumed and then felt the need to update onto their profile. It also doesn't tell us what kind of anime they watch, which is just as prevalent a boss baby vibes problem within the community as it is outside of it. For example, I like to think that I have an open mind and fairly broad tastes, but you can see some very easy patterns across my lists. I love comedy, nichijouke and yashike, science fiction, fantasy, and anything that has a sort of focus on the minutia of the main characters' lives. And this is reflected in the kind of anime that I tend to talk about on this channel. Conversely, I've seen next to no sports, magical girl, or idol shows, despite these having very sizable representation in anime, because they're just not genres that particularly appeal to me. With that mindset, if I were to watch and review, say, a show like Haikyuu, and then start to make unsubstantiated claims about sports anime in general, fans of the show and the genre itself would probably be very understandably upset. Not good! 
No! Unfortunately, this is not just a hypothetical, and happens all the time towards shows that become part of the popular discourse. If a show within the genre becomes popular enough, UniTube and UniTwitter often feel the need to throw in their inflammatory two cents, showing open disrespect for the genre. Usually with some sort of attached thing of, this one is different though, because I like this one. I don't like the other ones, I like this one, this is me. People are quick to bemoan about how isekai are all the same and super cliche and saturating the industry despite the fact they've only seen like three of them. They'll say that the particular magical girl show that they like is good because it's dog gothic and the characters actually die, unlike other magical girl shows. Despite the fact that all those attributes are appropriate to describe fucking Sailor Moon. And if I see the phrase, unlike other mecha shows, one more goddamn fucking time. There is nothing wrong with simply not being interested in a genre. And conversely, there's nothing wrong with a newcomer watching something in an unfamiliar genre and sharing their thoughts. But my point is, anime is a rich, broad collection of subgenres and trends that unless you have a perfectly balanced portion of watch genres, which is unlikely, no number is going to be high enough to make you an expert on all of them. The other biggest problem with these seen X amount of anime statements is, how do you quantify exactly one anime? Those sites like Mal do have features to track the number of watched hours and number of individual episodes and things like that. What most people tend to only focus on is the hardline number of individual works. But this number is incredibly easy to cheese, because anime can vary widely in all matters of duration. For example, I is an incredibly short video by independent animator Rapparu, which consists of a single shot. Despite only having a runtime of 7 seconds, marking it complete is counted the same as marking the entirety of the original Doraemon complete a show that has nearly 1800 10 minutes long episodes. The experience and effort of watching these two properties is in no way comparable, yet they are both counted as one single anime. Now, most examples aren't that extreme, but the fact is that watching a short film or an OVA takes much less time and commitment in comparison to a multi-core TV series. And while I love this about anime as a whole in that you have variety of options, it is all too easy to go on a bender of watching a bunch of music videos and short films on YouTube just to get a bunch of easy ads. And don't get me wrong, I've been guilty of this too, but it ties into this weird sort of completionist pressure that the community gives off as a whole. Even with anime of more comparable length, there is the issue of how these sites tend to count seasons as individual shows. Considering how production-wise in Japan a season is closer to a sequel, this makes some amount of sense. But as it's based on what is considered a season in the Japanese broadcast, not in the Western release, this leads to situations where a show like Agretsuko counts as four anime, well six if you include the original TV bumpers and the Christmas special, while One Piece in its long, uninterrupted glory is counted as just one. It also means if you're a fan of an overall franchise, you can add a lot more properties to Mal compared to a one or two core single TV show release. If you're an Attack on Titan fan, for example, and you watch all of the OVAs and specials and all the extras, etc., you can add a whopping 20 properties to Mal. Compare that to Monster, a show which has a comparable number of episodes to the main storyline of Titan, where you can only add three, two of which are simple recap specials. This also leads into the question of what exactly counts as completed, and whether it is synonymous with seen. I'm sure many of you remember the video a while back of the guy who edited all of Naruto to exclude all of the filler or well, more precisely what he considered to be the filler because you know, it's a useless and uh, completely arbitrary term. <laughs> he did so to make it a better viewing experience for his girlfriend. While that might make for a more streamlined and consumable viewing experience, I have a question for you. Would you be okay if his girlfriend added Naruto and Shippuden as completed on now? In the case of the first series, almost the entire back half is completely filler and therefore skipped. And Shippuden's filler arcs are frequent and fucking wild. And that's just based off of what is listed as a pure filler episode on Anime Filler List, aka the worst site on the internet. In the video itself, Oceans goes into depth about how, though he kept a couple of the filler episodes that he liked and that he felt added to the story, 
He also cut a lot of non-filler material as well, such as excessive flashbacks, padding in the middle of fights, canon scenes that he thought were a bit too slow and he trimmed them down, and canon scenes that he just straight up didn't like, such as the entirety of Konohamaru's introduction episode. By his final estimation, he had cut Naruto down from 250 hours to 135 hours, meaning that his girlfriend in the end only watched around half of it. And as he rearranged some of the sequencing, timing and music to match his vision of what the pacing should be, not in its intended original form. You could argue that she's completed what is in the manga's main canon storyline, except the stuff that motions just didn't like, that she's watched Naruto and is a Naruto fan. I'd say that's totally fine in terms of experience. She's definitely seen Naruto. But I don't think she could say that she has completed it. This is the anime, not the manga after all. Again, I don't think it's important that she's completed it. Like she's busy, she wants to use her time wisely, it's fine. Who, you can only stand the 15th fucking filler episode where Naruto failed the mission because he stood in dog shit or something. But it would still feel a little disingenuous to me to mark it as complete when you've ultimately ended up skipping about half of it. Again, it's all relative. If you skip like the recap episode or like a particularly bad filler arc, or you missed an episode of Pokemon back in the day on TV, or it was the banned one with the guns and so you never got to see it, and then you get to the Indigo League and Ash pulls out one of his 30 Tauros and you're like, when the fuck did you catch them cunts? That's all fine, mark it complete. I'm not like the Mal Police or anything like that. That's like splitting hairs. But this is the reason why I have yet to add something like Bleach to my mouth. Despite being a big fan, having read the manga several times over, and having watched the first two arcs several times over, I have yet to get past the middle of the Huecomundo arc in the anime. And even then, I skipped the entirety of Bount because... <sighs> I've definitely seen Bleach. Yet despite having technically watched more Bleach than the vast majority of other anime I have down on now, even when you add up rewatches, I could never say that I've completed it. Which therein lies my ultimate problem with this whole thing. Just because I haven't completed it, why should it be discarded entirely? Of course, if I were to do a video on Bleach or a more structured review, then that would be a different story, and I would want to go back and make sure I completed it to maintain integrity and know what I was talking about. But why shouldn't one of the anime I've spent the most time watching not count as part of my experience with anime as a whole? In this day and age, people seem to believe that you haven't seen something unless you've seen absolutely all of it. This is most likely due to the modern luxury of having easy access to an entire work at once, binge culture, and just simply being spoiled for choice. But people are busy, and some anime are long, and you can definitely be a fan of something that you aren't even close to completing. Nobody likes the guy who asks the girl wearing the Metallica shirt to name three of their songs. So why should we allow the same thing in other fandoms as well? The utility of sites like Mal, Letterbox, etc. to me is ultimately personal tracking. To remember what you've already watched, what you want to get back to or leave, to keep on top of things you want to check out, and to make new discoveries on shows that seem interesting to you. But it is all too easy when using sites like this to turn your hobby into a chore, into making it nothing more than a checklist that needs to be ticked off, like grinding levels in an RPG. I used to care a lot about this about five years ago. I had seen my friends with much higher Mal or Annie list numbers than me. And at the time, my number was only about in the 200s or so, and I felt a weird sort of insecurity about it. So I did all of the things that I've mentioned in this part of the video. I watched easy ad music videos and OVAs on YouTube. I binged shows to complete them faster. I even watched things I wasn't even interested in just to add it to Mal. And you know what? That kind of made me hate anime for a while. <laughs> That's not the way I like to watch things. I like to watch maybe a couple shows at once, a few episodes at a time, check out all the OVAs, specials, movies, etc. that there might be, dive really deeply into that franchise for a while. That's why it's taken me so long to reach that 500 number despite watching anime for most of my adult life. And that number which is really probably completely untrue anyway. And if you like to watch anime in a large volume, if you want to keep track on all the shows at once, that's totally fine. Of course, do what you want to do. But it should be because that's how you enjoy watching it. Anime should be watched, discussed, and shared because you enjoy it. Not just used to level grind to the next level cap, with no other reward than number go up. 
And the faint possibility that maybe, just maybe, now, some asshole online may allow you to talk to him. Dragon Ball Z is well remembered for its use of power levels, a concept where somebody was scanned by an alien device and their abilities in battle were given a numerical value. In the story, several characters believe that if two people enter into battle, the one with the higher number should win in all cases. DBZ's fandom is also notorious for caring a lot about these numbers, and countless playground arguments, YouTube analysis, and forum battles went underway trying to ascribe every character an accurate number for every single point in time, and therefore, who would beat who. But what everyone seems to forget is that the main focus of power levels in the story, other than to add tension, ended up being showing how unreliable they were. The villains are the only ones in the story who routinely scanned for the number, and the number was rarely accurate. This was due to the main characters being able to suppress and focus their energies, the heroes rarely being scanned at their peaks, and even in instances where one fighter was very much definitely lower than the other, they still often won due to strategy, teamwork, or some kind of specialized skill, knowledge, or training. The characters who relied solely off the numerical advantage, especially those who based it off outdated readings, fell victim to practical experience. Toriyama eventually dropped the numbers from the story entirely because they became too tiresome to keep track of, and by that point of the story, none of the remaining characters cared about the number anyway. My anime list, Ani list, and all these other list sites are just like power levels. Sure, they can be fun to compare, and they're ultimately very useful for keeping track of one's progress. And yeah, someone with a thousand probably does know more about anime than someone with a five. But they ultimately lack true, practical application. They are easy to change, cheat, or lie through, are not always accurate or up to date, and ultimately have zero impact on someone's knowledge or insight into anime, production of anime, anime subgenres, Japanese culture, or media theory at large. If people don't stop fussing and gatekeeping over the specifics of comparing number one to number two, then we'll forever be stuck on that playground, arguing whether it was Goku or Vegeta who won that battle. When the real answer is, it was Yajirobe. Ow!